Thank you. We rejoice and we celebrate your resurrection. We thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity and the blessing of coming to feast in your word and to get ourselves saturated with the word of life to impart on us the faith of God. Thank you today. For your word will be taught again, and as it is written, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Today we are going to learn the living word of God to live victorious lives in this world. We give you all the glory. Amen. Hallelujah, brethren. I bring you uh, the other part of the teaching that started, which uh, stated, keep believing and never give up. Keep believing and never give up. We have seen in the various series before now that our faith is the point of focus. Is the point of focus and we learned, we have seen clearly that without faith we cannot please God. We have seen that uh, whatever is done without faith is a sin. And we have realized that it is central to our living and everything about life is spiritual. I want you to know life is all about spirituality and I want you to know that there are two dimensions to everything in life. There is the physical dimension and there are spiritual dimension to issues and to matters and I want today to go a little further to show you that what we require to do to live victoriously, to live glorious lives, to really make God proud of our being called after Him, the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I want to focus on the soul of humanity. And I want to say to you that this is the battleground. The soulless realm is the battleground. Our mind is the battleground. That's the place of contention. That's the focus of all the attacks from hell. And that is the gateway to our human spirit. And so we cannot ignore the major gateway to our spirit. We need to guard that gateway. We need to guard that door with all diligence. We have to pay attention to what goes on in our mind. And that's exactly where we get defeated from. If we must win, our mind must be set on the right things. If we are to lose equally, we lose from the point of our mind. Because it is written in uh, Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, that as a man thinketh, so is he. So our thought is so equal to our victory. Our thought pattern is going to be examined today and we are going to pray later on to find deliverance over issues and the foul spirit that molests and attacks and reigns in the region of our mind that is denying us the victory that was given to us by the cross of Jesus Christ. We are going to find deliverance today by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to speak to you very passionately and passionately today from the point of my spirit because this is a very, very critical matter. The matter of our mind, the issues that goes on in the mind is so central to whether you lose or whether you win. And today we are going to look into the perfect law of liberty. James was talking to us in first, uh, James chapter 1 verse 25. He said, he who is not a forgetful hearer of the word, but he who looks at the perfect law of liberty that is able to save our souls. The word of God is the perfect law of liberty. Is the law that sets free. Is the word that in it there is deliverance. When you look into the perfect law of liberty, your soul is saved. Because the word of God is incorruptible. The word of God is supreme and superior to every other word. And the word of God reigns above all institutions, even in the spirit. God himself honors his word above all his names. That's what we have seen. It is written that he honors his word above all his names. 
So tonight, looking at first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, the word declares, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it said, We all, with an open face, as we behold, with an open face, we behold, we have been changed, we have been transformed into the same image, from glory to glory. As we behold them, as we look into the perfect law of liberty, as we behold the word of God, as we go into the revelation of God's word, we are being transformed, we are being changed, we are being renewed, we are being translated into the same image. What is the image? The image of Christ. We are being transformed to the image of Christ from glory to glory. So I challenge you to release your faith to the Word of God today because you will be changed from one level of glory to another level of glory. The power of God will come through this broadcast to you, to your various living rooms as the Word is being expounded upon. And so the very first scripture I like to work on this evening will be Ephesians chapter 1. The book of Ephesians chapter 1, I read just two verses. Verses Two, uh, uh, verses 2 and 3, verses 3 and 4 rather, Ephesians chapter number 3, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 2 and 3, hallelujah, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 2 and 3, and the word declares, it says, blessed be the God of our Father, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He blessed us with every, not some, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So if you are in Christ, you are already blessed. If you are saved, you are in blessings. God's blessings is conferred on you if you have offered your life to Jesus Christ. You are no longer in the curse. You are no longer in the, in the blameless. You are blessed. You are blessed by God with every, not some, every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing is now present in your life. If you are in Christ, if you are saved, if you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible makes us know that we have all of God's blessings in one body through Christ Jesus. Of course, the epitome of God's blessing to humanity is Christ Jesus himself. So you are blessed already. If you are in Christ, you are so blessed. Beyond the curse, you are blessed. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. He says, just as he has chosen us before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He chose us in Christ Jesus. God chose us in Christ Jesus before the world was ever founded that we should be holy in his presence and blameless hallelujah so our identity is the identity of holiness the call of god upon our lives is to be holy for i the lord your god i am holy if god knows it is impossible for humans to be holy he wouldn't request he would not say that you should be when you hear the word should be, it means that's what we could be. He knows we can be holy in his presence. He knows we can be blameless in his knowledge. But in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, there is no mortal man that can be blameless in the sight of God outside of Christ. There is no mortal man at your very best. Your righteousness is as a filthy rag before God. You still fall short of God's standard. Without Christ, you cannot make it. You will never measure up. You will never attain to God's righteousness. 
you will never come to power with God's holiness. But in Christ Jesus, we have been chosen. We were chosen to be holy because the nature of Christ is holiness. So that holiness has been imparted unto us. We are known as upright because of Jesus Christ. So today, if you are in Christ, you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You are blessed already. And I can just stop at this point and just rejoice. What a blessed life we have been given. The life that is full of glory. The life that is inexpressible, full of joy. Inexpressible joy, glorious joy. God has blessed us. It means in your life if you are in Christ, nothing broken, there is nothing missing. Your life is sorted already. You have the eternal blessing conferred upon you already. Glory to God. This is an amazing revelation. And as I speak to you tonight, I want you to begin to see yourself blessed. Blessed to be a believer. Blessed to be saved and sanctified. Blessed to be known as a child of the living God. It's a blessing. This is no common, it's not a common experience. It is a divine experience. It is supernatural. That you, the sinner man, you, the sinner you, is being called by God now. The righteousness of God, and God has conferred on you all the blessings that is spiritual in Christ Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I call myself blessed. How do you call yourself? You are blessed. You are blessed. Receive it. You are blessed. I didn't say you are blessed. God called you blessed. And yes, you are blessed. If God called you blessed, it is equal to nothing broken, nothing missing in your life. God recognized you as blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want us to look at this scripture that brings us into a place of obedience. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It shows us how to harness, how to enjoy, how to live in this blessing that we have been called to. It shows us graphically what we need to do to really have the maximum blessing that Jehovah has placed upon our lives by calling. In uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, now we are brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So, we are the ones now in response to the blessings of God upon our lives, in appreciation and in thanksgiving, as an attitude of worship, we now present ourselves to God. We have been made holy. We have been made blameless in His sight. Now, we now need to present ourselves in attitude, in conversation, in thought, in our will, in our emotions, we now need to present ourselves to God as a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable before God. He says, which is a reasonable service. He said, we should now not conform ourselves to the pattern, to the lifestyle, to the way of doing things of this world. We must not conform to the pattern of this world. But we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So that's the job. This right there is the point of action for the believer. We must pay conscious attention to our thinking, to our will, to our emotions. We must come to the place where we can dedicate our lives fully such that our thoughts must be dedicated. Our will must be surrendered as Jesus surrendered his will at the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, not my will, but your will be done. Making conscious decision to do the will of the Father at every point of challenge. He said, not my will, but your will be done. Our thought, our will, and our emotions must be aligned to the Word of God. We are the ones to do this. 
And thanks be to God that he has not left us to do this on our own strength. The Bible says, I can do all things. Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is a divine strength already in every believer to be able to act in obedience to God. To be able to ask, act worshipfully to follow God's instruction. The instructions of God are not grievous. God's will is known in the world. And as you search into the perfect law of liberty and you find out that which pleases God, your responsibility is just to go ahead and do that which pleases God all the time. The more you do the things that please God, the more you feel confident to appear before Him. Hallelujah. To enjoy all that He has provided. He says, when we, we must not be conformed to the world, to the pattern, to the lifestyle, to the ways of the world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So, how do we get our mind renewed? How do we get our will totally laid down at the altar of sacrifice? How do we get our emotions checked by the Word of God? I have found out in study that there are two kinds of mind that a human can possess. There is the natural mind, the mind of the flesh, and there is a spiritual mind. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, chapter 2 verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16. The scripture says clearly, For we who he said, for who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. He said, But we have the mind of Christ. When you get born again, a new mind has been given to you. So that you can know the things of God. So that you can think the thoughts of Christ. You have a new mind. And we, when we realize that we have a new mind because of our new birth experience, we are now born from above, we need now to learn the culture of the new kingdom we came into. We need to learn, we need to invest time to look in the perfect constitution, the law of liberty, to learn the ways of life, to understand the, 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 the modus operandi of the new kingdom. The new kingdom that we have been brought into has a pattern that is different from the pattern of this world. And if you live according to the pattern of the new kingdom, you will live above corruption. You will live in victory all the days of your life. And that's exactly what we need to learn. We must not be lazy to learn the new kingdom principles, the new kingdom ways and norms. Because that's the only one that guarantees victory 24-7. And God wants us now to renew our mind. When we get our mind renewed, we are transformed to the image of Christ from glory to glory. The point of renewing our mind is to concentrate on the constitution, on the tenets of our faith. And one of those is in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21 to 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21 to 24. Verse 21 to 24. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21 to 24. He said, If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, hallelujah. You know, there are two very salient and very important things in the kingdom that you must know as a kingdom citizen. Number one, you have to know the person of Christ. The person of Christ. And the person of Christ is your Redeemer. He saves you from sin. He took you away from the wrath of God and brought you into the Beloved. The person of Christ coming to sit and live inside you as a person. So Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the person of Christ, you need to know that. And the second, which is most important also, is the teachings are the teachings of Christ. This is what Christians have been called to live by. You accept Jesus Christ to your Lord, to your life as Lord and Savior. 
and you live your lives based on the teachings of Christ on the teachings of Christ because grace saved you but truth will keep you the grace of God that you have nothing absolutely nothing to do to receive you do not qualify for it you do not merit it it's a free gift of God to humanity all you did was just receiving the gift of salvation now after the receiving of the gift of salvation the next and the most vital point or the next move will be receiving the teachings of Christ the teachings of Christ keeps you in faith and causes you to grow in love and the life of the Spirit so we have known Jesus now we need to follow the teachings of Christ the teachings is as important as the gift of Christ himself hallelujah so now that you have known that Jesus Christ is the truth in verse 22 it says that you put off this is the teaching of Christ now put off concerning the former conduct now that you are in Christ you have a responsibility according to the new constitution you belong to put off the former conversation the former conducts the old man that grows that is growing within humanity he grows in corruption according to the deceitful lust is corrupt is corrupted by sin is corrupt because Satan controls the mind of those who are not saved those who are not saved respond all the time to the five senses the thought the feelings the emotion or the, the the smell the, the the all that they respond to the five senses it is only what they see they can believe but those who are born again now can believe without seeing they are not guarded by sight they are not guarded by 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 what they feel they are not guarded by what they can touch they are guarded by the spirit that's why 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 will say to you, we are not moved by what we see, but we are moved by faith. We are a people that lives by faith because the spiritual can only be operated by faith. Hallelujah. So understand this, that we have a responsibility to put off the former conduct, the old man that grows in corruption, according to the deceitful nature but the new man which is the spirit of our mind hallelujah the new spirit that God has given to us has a mind the mind of the spirit and that we must put on the new man the new mind that is created after God created according to God in true righteousness hallelujah in true righteousness and holiness so it's just like a garment. When you get saved, you have a responsibility because of the new life you have to put off the old garment. Just as we saw blind Bartimaeus, as he was invited to meet with Jesus, he cast away his garment. There are certain garments we need to cast out. We need to remove uh, because they are garment of the old man. It is the nature and the old conduct we need to take it out and then bring a new garment the new mindset the new thinking pattern the new culture the new conduct and it is what God expects us to do and to do this we just need to keep looking into the perfect law of liberty that is able to save our souls and as we behold we get translated we get transformed by the renewing of our mind we get transformed he takes us from one level of glory to another level of glory i want to pray for you at this point i will be continuing i see that my time is up i like to pray for you right now because of the experiences that people do have you will find out that there is a bombardment on your human mind you are getting bombarded 
And that's the point of whether you lose or you win. Is at the place the battle takes place in the mind. The contention is in the mind. The mind is the window into your human spirit. So if your mind is not well guarded, you are likely to concede defeat. And currently with the situation and the occurrences and the events and the rumor and all the noise around your life, if you are not stable in your mind, you are very likely to be defeated. I want to pray for you that every foul spirit that is manipulating your thought, that is contending with you at the place, at the region of your mind, I address them in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebukes you. I come against you in the life of that viewer right now. I bind every foul spirit that is completing competing, molesting, manipulating, and oppressing that brother, oppressing that sister, that is giving you no way of escape. That foul spirit causing depression, that foul spirit causing oppressing you in your dreams, I bind you, I command you out in Jesus' name. I release freedom. I release freedom. Now receive peace as from tonight. You will no longer be manipulated. I plead the blood of Jesus all over you. I decree, be released. Be set free. In Jesus' name. In your various homes, I want you to know deliverance came right now. You are free because the Son of God sets you free. And I want you to please be prepared for the part two and the other side of this teaching. Because it will lit up every darkness surrounding your life. We can have a renewed mind. We can have the old mindset taken away completely. We can have that audacity to declare, I am a holy man. You have, it is possible to walk in God's righteousness. It is possible to be at peace with God. It is possible to see yourself and call yourself sanctified as a holy vessel. God wants us to look like that. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the scripture says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. That is your portion. It's part of the spiritual blessings that you have been blessed with. You are not just blessed to call yourself a Christian. No, you are blessed beyond the natural. Actually, the scripture says, with all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places, the peace that reigns in heaven should reign in your heart. The joy that reigns in heaven should reign in your heart, even on earth. The boldness and the confidence that Jesus had to walk on water should come upon you. That even in the midst of the storm, you are confident because you know in whom you have believed. I declare, let there be restoration of your peace. Let there be divine order in your life right now. I bind every confusion. You foul spirit manipulating the mind, the will, the emotions of the people. I command you, be arrested. Be set free now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you until I come your way again next on the next broadcast. Shalom, shalom.